My real estate team has helped thousands of people buy and sell real estate over the last 16 years. Since this is what we do every day, you can imagine that we have some really super crazy stories and crazy stuff when it comes to home builders and building new homes. So in this video, I'm going to go over some of the biggest pitfalls that you can avoid, especially when you are building a new construction home. We're going to talk about the good, the bad, and the ugly. So if you want to make smart decisions and you want to save money, hammer that like button. It only takes one second and you're going to get rewarded with super helpful videos like this. So let's dive in. Now, you probably have heard the news somewhere about someone complaining about issues they had with a builder or problems they had building a new house. Now, I know it is a stressful time and I know there's a lot of moving parts. There's a lot of stuff that has to come together. And now I have personally built multiple houses, so I do know. But the problem I really hate to see is when someone has saved their whole entire life to buy that brand new home and only have a builder lie to them and the buyer gets hosed. And I don't want this to happen to you. So I don't want you to get burned. Not all builders are bad, okay? Uh, they're certainly not all good and some are mediocre. But if you watch this all the way to the end, you're gonna know what to do what to look for, and what to stay away from. So we've all heard the stories of major construction boom. It's happening all over the nation in all areas. We're in growth mode. You've seen it. There's lots of land being cleared. There's new homes being built. There's communities popping up all over the place. But building a dream home is not always a dream. I know many buyers we've watched lovingly staged TV shows, and they envision themselves buying a home, just like they're walking through the entrance of Disney World. It's the most happiest place on earth. Or is it more like a trip to the car dealer, right? So I've heard stories of greedy builders demanding more money. Uh, we've also heard about some new builds who are known for notorious crappy workmanship or Serious loopholes in construction contracts, yet unsuspecting home buyers sign on a dotted line every single day. This is why I'm doing these videos. It's for you. So let's go in. Number one, construction markups. Now let's say that you own a piece of land. You already own it. You bought it. You're good to go. You're building a custom home or a semi-custom home. Now every home builder is different. The, the build quality is different too. Most custom home builders use a cost plus markup. Now, what that means is a cost plus 25%, 35%, or even 50% markup. So the example is builders will actually build a house and the costs are building materials, labor permits, labor permits, you know, let's say it's a $300,000 house. It's their cost to actually put it up. Now they need to make a profit. So then the builder adds on the builder markup and that's where that comes in. So this can be a huge difference in price, what the consumer actually pays. So knowing what a builder uh, is where you are, knowing what is a fair price and knowing if it's a good quality um, and knowing what to look at and what they can offer you is very important to a buyer. Now, as an example, here in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, my team has been working with a builder who's building homes for our new clients, new building clients at cost plus 15%. But knowing which builder builds what and at what price is super important. So before you get in deep, no matter where you live in the nation, knowing where to save money on a new build is the important thing. Number two, clauses. Now, most big track builders, nationwide builders, use their own contract. They don't use the state-specific contract. The builder says, uh, we're going to build you a house. And then they verbally tell you, yeah, your house will be ready. You sign a contract and your house will be ready in, let's say, six months. If the builder can't perform for whatever reason, the fine print then gives the builder up to two years to put something together. So buyer beware. Most big track builders have their own contract, as I said, but the devil is in the details. So imagine a bunch of buyers who've been looking around to buy and they can't find anything, but yet they're willing to pay, you know, $50,000 or $100,000 more than the contract was going for six or eight months ago. You know, construction delays. What is a builder thinking? You know, 
we've seen both big and small builders take advantage of this. And I'm not throwing builders all into the same bucket. So don't hate on me uh, I'm for just telling the truth, especially when you go ahead and make your comments below, because I do want you to comment. But there are some really reputable builders out there, and I just want you to know about that. So just watch out for the devil in the details. Cancellation of contract. Let's talk about builders, medium, large, and even small. Now, because of inflation, a builder has the ability to sell that lot and home for more money. And they don't mind if the buyer may get ticked off for taking too long to build, and they don't care if a buyer wants to bail. You know, you, you've heard it, and, and I've heard it for sure, stories of complaining customers that are out there. I've seen this in the news. They, they go to the building site, and they want to find out why their house isn't being built, and they get a cease and desist letter to stay off the property. That's because they're not technically the buyers yet. So I get it. People tend to get ticked off, especially when you see other homes that are being built all around you, and they wonder why their contract, you put their contract in first and they still are, other people are going ahead of them. So the question I have for you is this, did the builder's cost go up? And if so, is there an escalation clause in the contract where the buyer is subject to pay more? You know, when the cost of goods goes up, what happens? Will the buyer have to come out of pocket to pay for increasing costs? What happens to the deposit that the buyer put down on the build? Trust me, you don't want to lose money when you're building a house. You need to know what to expect, and these are the pitfalls. Hey, did you hear about the new home builder who completely ruined the new kitchen? Just give yourself some time and let that sink in. <laughs> I'm sorry, I won't do that again. Okay, all right. Number five, put all communications with the builder in writing. Now, I have found communications that you have with the builders, representatives, make sure it's not just verbal, they said, they told me, no. Make sure you have it backed up in writing and document everything. And that's including checks and deposits. So this can be super helpful, especially if there's ever an issue. Uh, home builders, new home builders say that they promised you this and you gotta have that record. You gotta have that record to show them. So especially when it comes to the cost of lighting or fixtures and budgets, these are very important things. So watch out for the upcharges, and this helps you from overpaying, especially if you know the costs up front. This is super important for you as a home buyer to watch every single item you pick out in the design center. Now, why is that? I have seen where buyers have bought great new home in a nice community, they get super excited because this is their first new home. I haven't had a new home. I've been buying, you know, whatever it is, they're excited. And they go and check all the option boxes for every single option that they can. So I've seen it already where it was $80,000 in options over the appraisal compared to other like homes in the neighborhood. So if you're financing, can you see where this is a big problem? You know, buyers had two choices, just two. You either get turned down for the loan don't buy the house, and they were super excited, or come out of pocket, write a check for the additional upgrades. Now, I'm not saying don't build your dream home. I, I'm saying build your dream home. All I'm saying is be aware of the items that go into your house. It can be a huge difference. And especially in the levels, like think about this, just not levels, but costs, okay? You can get a $1,000 refrigerator, or you can get a $10,000 refrigerator, right? So, uh, a 5000 or a $500 chandelier can be as much as 5000 or more. So think about all the upgrades that, that can possibly happen. Do you want the small cabinets? Do you want the big cabinets? Do you want the easy pull? Do you want the close? How about countertops? Do you want, do you want granite? Do you want uh, quartz? Quartzite? You know, what do you want? Flooring? Do you want uh, vinyl? Do you want tile? Do you want, you know, all these? you want a fireplace? you want sunrooms? you want a patio? Each item that you put into a house adds up. And it can be surprising to your budget. So just be aware of that. And number six, appraisal. And we talked about appraisal a little bit, but I'm going to go a little bit further because this is, this is something else about that. You need to know what happens when the appraisal comes in and it's lower. So, so what actually happens? If you're buying and you want to pay cash for a house and it's valued for less on the day that you buy it, 
do you have to waive the appraisal to get the house? So what if you're financing? If the appraisal is lower than the contract price, are you as the buyer required to come out of pocket for the difference? So I've seen new builders, and this is pretty common as prices have increased because the appraisals aren't keeping up with it. New builders are making a buyer sign a waiver. So you really need to know and be prepared for this if this is what you want or to make sure that that's the price range you need to be in. Number seven, model homes. Now just a note, model homes are gorgeous. When you walk in, they have every single option as an upgrade in there and it's in the model home, right? Because they want to put their best foot forward. But the base house comes with these standard features. Just be sure that you're aware of what is a standard and what is an upgrade. And know what you're getting because you want to make sure there's no surprises, especially when you do your final walkthrough just before closing. That's not when you want to find this stuff out. Number eight, on-site agent. Okay, so let's talk about real estate agent, a buyer's agent, a real estate buyer's agent versus walking into a model for a home and an on-site builder all by yourself. Two scenarios. On-site agent, they just sell. They work for the builder. They're working for the builder's best interest, not the buyer. And there's a little sign there that says the agent on site works for the developer. That's the disclosure. That's it. Uh, so the agent there on site just does transactions, one time deal with the buyer, no repeat business, and says, you know, they're going to give the buyer updates as the house is being built. But so often I hear stories of complete lack of communications, and the builder doesn't even care because it's a one and done transaction with that buyer. Now I'm going to go to the versus, okay, the other side, the buyer's agent. Listen to what a buyer's agent does, okay? They will listen to what a buyer's needs and wants are. Then they're going to give the best options to the buyer, not just with one builder, not just with this community, but the entire county, for instance. They're an advocate for the buyer. They give their clients the best builder's options that fit the best values. They work for the buyer in the buyer's best interest. And many times this local expert has created many builder relationships over the years, doesn't happen in a week, and repeat relationships. Now, builders want to work with a lot of the top experts. You know why? Because they're going to do more business with them in the future. So a buyer's agent can also help the buyer directly and by doing videos, FaceTime, pictures, you know, updates, things that they see, and really the eyes and ears for the buyer. So pictures, I told you about uh, documenting, but pictures are super important should any problems arise and you need to get them corrected. So you should think that the on-site representative who works directly for the builder in the builder's best interest, are they gonna look after you? in the same way that a buyer's agent who is working for you would. Now, whether you're looking in Myrtle Beach or beyond, wherever you are, we've got your back when you're moving because I've got a network of real estate agents that can hook you up with, and no matter where you live in the nation, I can help. So just pick up the phone, give us a call, send an email, smoke signal, whatever. Number nine, things that can affect the closing Oh my gosh, we've all heard supply chain issues, right? Um, many moving parts go into a house when it's being built. Think about all the stuff that has to go into a house. New home communities need to know what you want to know, what the builder's batting average is, because you've got all these moving parts that are coming together to build you one product. Now, here's what I want you to know. It's batting average. Do they order their materials in advance, the, the builder? Or do they just use just-in-time delivery, which means it's somewhere else and they're pulling it. And if they're out of stock, that's it. Some builders will actually stockpile. They have a warehouse. They actually put things in there. Okay. What about delays? You know, unsuspecting buyers, I see this, who have not worked with a builder before, may not know what products are on hold. Or the builder orders in advance things like trusses, lumber, windows, siding, or like if you're choosing your colors of choice, can you get those colors? How about cabinets? How about HVAC? How about ductwork? That sounds simple, but your HVAC won't work without ductwork. How about labor? We've all heard about the labor shortages everywhere, right? Finding qualified electricians and plumbers 
You know, we see where people, you know, you call uh, somebody up and they don't even show up. You've heard stories of this too. How about the CO occupancy permits, the, the, uh, the occupancy permits, the county permits, or utility lines? But having knowledge of the builder's batting average is very important to the success of your build. You can't always trust the online reviews. You know, you need the knowledge of real world results. What's actually happening right now? What's happening on the ground? Not what happened six months ago, but what's happening now? Number 10, upgrades. Okay, if you don't own the land, what about the lot premiums if you're dealing with a developer or a community or a neighborhood? Or what are the upcharges or the builder fees? And, and how will those be handled? You just want to make sure up front that there's no games being played. You want to know what you're paying for up front as well. What are your deposits? What's required? What do they require of you and when? So make sure you have proper building permits and inspections during the build. So that way there won't be any surprises, especially when it comes time for the certificate of occupancy. And you can actually inhabit the house, right? That's, that's the game plan. So I just want to say a big, big, big thank you for watching. So please comment below and let me know what you're planning on doing. I, I really do want to know if you want to watch more super helpful videos like this about real estate, be sure to go ahead and subscribe down here somewhere. My name is Jerry Pincus, and we're here to help you avoid the pitfalls that are costly. So I'll see you in the next video, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. I hope you're having a fantastic day. Take care.